Welcome! This is a tutorial on creating an application with Ghipster. Let's create a new application. I am calling Ghipster and it is going to ask me a few questions on the application I would like to create. What is the best name of your application? I will stick with a default name. Do you want to use Maven or Gradle? I will stick with Maven. What is your default Java package name? Do you want to use Java 7 or Java 8? If you choose Java 8, you will have access to Lambda expressions. Which type of authentication would you like to use? So this is with Spring Security. I will stick with the default cookie-based authentication. Which type of database would you like to use? You can either use an SQL database or a NoSQL database, which is MongoDB. As I have selected an SQL database, I have now a specific question on Ibanet. The Ipster is using GPA and Ibanet, which is the implementation of GPA, for accessing your database. And Ibanet has got a cache, a second level cache. So you can either use no cache at all, a local cache, or a distributed cache. I will use the local cache. Do you want to use clustered HTTP sessions? Do you want to use WebSockets? We are using the Atmosphere framework for doing WebSockets. Which production database would you like to use? So as I have selected an SQL database, I have the choice between two SQL databases for production. And in development, I have a third choice, which is H2, which is an in-memory database. It can be easier to work with H2, but for this demonstration, we will use MySQL because we can have a look at our database more easily. Would you like to use Grunt or GubJS to build the front end? So this is for building the AngularJS application. I will stick with Grunt. And do you want to use Compass for authoring your CSS? So, the hipster is now generating the application depending on choices I have made. I can already open it with my IDE. I am currently using IntelliJ IDE, but this is working the same way with Spring Tool Suite or with NetBeans. Let's open the project. And while the project is opening, I am launching MySQL Workbench. Uh, as we have selected MySQL for working uh, on the application, I have to create a new schema, which has the same name of the application. So let's call it jhipster. And I have now a new schema, which is, of course, empty for the moment. So, here is my application. It's a Maven application. So we have a, a pom.xml file, which is a Maven configuration file. My IDE has also recognized it as a Maven project. And this application has got very classical Java uh, folder Layout, we've got a source main Java directory with our Java code. So this is our Spring Boot configuration. For example, let's have a look at the database configuration. This is a Spring Boot configuration. You can here see the add configuration uh, annotation, the add enable transaction management annotation, for example. We have here our domain model. So it is done with GPA. If we open up the user model, we can see uh, it's, a, it's a classical uh, Java bean mapped on a table. So this is an at entity GPA annotation. We've got a repository layer, which is done with Spring Data. So it's a pretty small classes because uh, Spring Data GPA is uh, um, auto-generating everything. And we've got a web layer with some REST endpoints for accessing our backend. So this is done with Spring MVC REST. This is for the Java part. In source main web app, we've got our web application, which is done with AngularJS. If we open up the script folder, 
We have here an AngularJS configuration for our application. This is a router. We've got services here, which are going to access our Java backend. And next to our source main um, folder, we've got a source test folder with our Java unit test. So this is done with a, with a Spring test context support. And we've got some JavaScript unit test with Karma.js. Let's run the application. I've got two ways of running the application. Either I right-click here on application and I say run application. I can also select debug if I want to debug it right for my IDE. This is very useful. Or I can start the application from the command line using Maven Spring Boot Run. So this is a specific Maven plugin made by Spring Boot which can start my application. Let's do it. The first thing this is going to do is update my database table. So let's have a look at my SQL. Refresh. And I've got now some sample tables created by jhipster and those tables even have some sample data. So this is a user table and as you can see we've already got a few users created. My application is now running. Let's have a look at it. So this is a fully responsive application as you can see. It is, of course, a secured application. I have to log in to use it. And it has got a few default screens. The first ones are for managing your user account, so you can change your settings, your passwords. You've got, of course, validation here. You've got also access to your open Spring Security sessions. You've got some administrative tools here. The first one is metrics. You have access here to a full statistics on your application. You've got GVM metrics, HTTP request metrics, metrics on your Java code, and on your cache. So this is the Ibanet second level cache we have selected while generating the application. Another very interesting tool is the log management screen. So here we can manage at runtime our logback log manager in Java. So if I, for example, select security, I have here access to Spring Security. And instead of being in one mode, let's, be, let's go to debug mode. You can see here we have now got lots of debug logs from Spring Security. This is very useful in production to understand what's happening in the application. Let's go back to one level. Last but not least, we've got a, a very nice API management screen. This is done with Swagger. We have access to a full documentation of our REST API. If I go here to the account, REST uh, endpoint, I can access it and see the, the, the results. This is very useful for people coding on AngularJS code. And last menu item is the language menu. JEPSTA is fully internationalized. You have access to 11 languages at the moment, so we can switch to Korean or to Russian. But for this demo, demo, we'll stick to English. So we have seen here the default application. It's very good, but of course, we are going to update it. Let's create a simple application and let's see which tools come bundled with the, with the hipster. So we have seen we have Maven. We have run the Maven Spring Boot plugin. You can also use the standard Maven goals like compile or test for running the unit test, um, or package for packaging the application. We have three other tools to see. 
The first one is Bower. So this is a tool for installing and updating JavaScript and CSS packages. If I have a look here in my web application, I've got here some Bower components installed. So as you can see here, we don't have the ng table component. I'm going to install it. Install ng table. And it's appearing here now. So we have installed it in the right directory. Second tool is Grunt. So Grunt is a task manager for JavaScript. It can run, for example, your test, Grunt test. This is running my JavaScript unit test. And a very interesting plugin is Grunt Server. Grunt Server launches the Chrome ID uh, browser and it's going to manage it. So as soon as I change an HTML, CSS, or JavaScript file, it is going to automatically update my browser. Let's have a look at it. I'm going to open our index page. And here you see we've got a banner with development written on it. This is this div here. If I delete it and save my file, my browser is automatically refreshing. Let's put it back. So this is extremely useful in development. When you do front-end development, you don't want to switch all the time between your IDE and your browser. So you just open both of them on two different screens and you see the result of your code straight away. I'm going to keep this open and it's going to refresh all the time while I work on my application. I'm opening up a new tab. Um, so we've seen Maven, Bower, Grunt, and the last tool we're going to see is Yeoman. We have already used it to generate our base application. Now we are going to use sub-generators. So Yeoman is giving us some sub-generators to improve the existing application. We have already used YoGipster. Now we're going to use YoGipster entity. This is going to create a new entity on our application. So let's create the author entity. So the author has got a name of type string. He has got a birthday of type date. As you can see, we are creating a database table. And of course, you can already understand that Jipster is going to generate all the code on top of this table to manage it from the front end, the AngularJS to the database. Our also has got a relationship to the book entity, which does not exist yet. It's a one-to-many relationship, and author can write many books. We have seen here our browser refreshing automatically because we have added some new files. Let's have a look at them here first. So we've got a GPA entity, we've got a repository, we've got a REST endpoint, we've got a liquid-based change log. We are going to see what this is in a few minutes. We've got a full AngularJS front-end with an HTML page, a router, a controller, and a service. And last but not least, we have an integration test in Java to, to check that our um, endpoint, our REST endpoint is working correctly. Let's see all those files. Oh. Here is my GPA entity. So it's linked to the book entity, which is, does not exist yet. So of course, it's read for the moment. It's going, of course, to compile as soon as we have created it. Um, it's mapped on a table called t underscore also. This table is going to be created automatically by jipster at startup because we have a liquibase update. So liquibase is a Java tool for only updates to the database. And when we create new GPA entities, 
with Gipster, Gipster automatically creates the correct liquid-based changelog. So here we see that our changelog is has a very specific name. It's a date and a comment, added entity also. And here we've got a new change set, which creates a new table with the correct information. It has got a name and a birthday. Gipster has also created a um, Spring Data GPA repository, which is here, which is empty because Spring Data is going to, to automatically create all the necessarily um, get um, crude operations. And we've got a REST endpoint called also resource for accessing our entity in REST. This is for the Java code and on the front end We've got a new author view here in HTML5 and a new AngularJS module with a controller, a router, and a service. This service is, of course, accessing our Spring MVC REST endpoints. Now, let's create the book entity. The book has a title of type string and it has got a price of type big decimal. It is of course linked to the author entity and it's a many to one relationship. As we have said, an author can write many books. If we go back to the author here, it's going to compile because the book entity has been created. It is right here. Okay, let's run our application again. This time I run it with my IDE. So the first thing the application is going to do is update the database. Let's go to my SQL workbench and have a look at our database schema. Refresh all. So we've got an author table and a book table. Let's have a look at the book table. It has got a title, a price, and an author ID. Now let's have a look at the application. We first have to log in. Admin, admin. And we've got some new screens. The first one is also. We can create a new also. with the birthday. And we can create a new book. Surprise. And our one too many relationships to the author table. Of course, you can edit it and you can delete it. Those are what two create, automatically created crude frontends, and they are also automatically understood here in our administration screen. If we go here to our uh, Java statistics, we've got here the author resource. We've seen we've created it once, and it has taken 27 milliseconds. We've got also the book uh, entity, which is um, monitored. And in our statistics, we've got the author and the book entity, which are automatically in our cache. You can see the author, we've got one object in the cache, it has been hit twice. And the mean time is um, 0.08 milliseconds, so it's really, really quick. Okay, so we have seen how to generate an application and update it with Gipster. I hope you have liked this tutorial.